Consider this, we are standing on the traditional land of the Algonquin, or Kittisipirinawak, Ottawa Rivermen people, who are part of the greater Anishinaabe Nation. Glashen Learns Residential School System I want everyone to understand that the legacy of the residential schools does not just affect the lives of the person who actually attended the school, but family members such as spouses and children are also very deeply affected by this sad legacy in history. Joanne Kotuatut. Students at Glashen spent time learning about the residential school system. We started by learning about some facts about this disturbing part of Canadian history. Over 130 residential schools were located across Canada, and the last school closed as recently as 1996. The policy behind the government-funded, church-run schools attempted to kill the Indian in the child. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission offers this introduction. And Canada separated children from their parents, sending them to residential schools. This was done not to educate them, but primarily to break their link to their culture and identity. In justifying the government's residential school policy, Canada's first Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald, told the House of Commons in 1883, When the school is on the reserve, the child lives with its parents, who are savages. In 1982, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms was established, and under Section 15 it says, Every individual is equal before and under the law, and has the right to the equal protection and equal benefit of the law, without discrimination, and in particular, without discrimination based on race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, age, or mental or physical disability. How then? Did the residential school system persist until 1996. Learning through inquiry. Students had many I wonder questions at the beginning of the unit. They wrote them down and posted them to share. They took notes from an article about the history of residential schools in Canada and presented their findings to the class. Afterwards, we posted all of the information on a bulletin board as a reference tool throughout the unit. Then we discussed the pathway to harm, and the students began to think about the difference between stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination, and how this pathway to thinking may have brought about this type of school system. Also, we provided students with events from Canadian history that tie into the residential school system. From deep in Canadian history, from creation stories and the effect of the introduction of the doctrine of discovery, all the way through to federal apologies and calls to action by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Students were tasked with putting these events in order, and then we discussed the findings. Project of Heart Making Tiles One of the most devastating aspects of the history of Indian residential schools in Canada is the number of children that died in residential schools. One of the gifts to learners in Project of Heart is the opportunity to commemorate the life of a child lost in residential school or to create a tile to honor an IRS survivor. By decorating the Project of Heart tiles and creating commemoration exhibits, Project of Heart participants pay tribute to precious children lost and to the survivors, their families, and communities.
sharing ideas, reflection. The students were asked to share what each tile represented to them. So what did you choose to draw? What does this represent? Okay, so the line, like line over there, it means a long journey. And those small sticks, it means like children, and the long sticks are adults. Okay. Thank you. And what's your name? Rama. Thank you. I think Kaya, and it says children, and then all around it, it says the words that mean everything that the children have gone through. So I understand that everyone's making a tile, and you wanted to uh, show us yours. So what What do you have on that? What, what does it mean? Why do you choose it? Um, well, it's, it's in the middle, you can see like this little green dot right here view from the camera is actually a symbol which represents life in Egyptian hieroglyphics. So, and then I put around it little hope symbols and I kind of like divided it around with a little wheel that kind of represented um, world peace. So it's like, so it's life, protective, and hope. Hmm. It represents of how their community was so, like they always work together, that's the turtle, and it also represents Turtle Island in Canada. Mine is a lizard and it represents connecting to your intuition and trusting your instincts. The final product. Students came together to create their own commemoration exhibit. Further thinking. In their force in the, these areas like Attawapiskat where they have little to no resources, I think instead we should give them a fair opportunity. They're no different than anybody else. It's so scary and like terrifying. So it must be really hard for them to. Yeah. Alright, so what part of this unit did you find the most shocking or least shocking? Or uh, the most eye opening? For the most eye opening, it was probably when they said like every. It was like 1 in 25 children died at a residential school, and then 1 in 26 died in like World War One. I think. That was pretty shocking. I personally believe that uh, we non-Aboriginals should stand up for Aboriginal uh, rights, such as uh, funding for their communities and schools on reserve. And we should always support them and uh, give them the help they need. Reconciliation The Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada was established in 2008 under the terms of the Indian Residential Schools Settlement Agreement. The Day of Apology where Stephen Harper addressed this issue was on June 11, 2008. Here is what he has to say. Today we recognize that this policy of assimilation was wrong, has caused great harm, and has no place in our country. Also, it was set out to guide and inspire a process of truth and healing, leading towards reconciliation within Aboriginal families and between Aboriginal peoples and non-Aboriginal communities, churches, governments, and Canadians generally. The process was to work to renew relationships on a basis of inclusion, mutual understanding, and respect. Stephen Harper continued by saying, These institutions gave rise to abuse or neglect and were inadequately controlled, and we apologize for failing to protect you. Not only did you suffer these abuses as children, but as you became par parents, you were powerless to protect your own children from suffering the same experience. And for this, we are sorry. More recently, on December 15, 2015, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made a statement after the release of the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Here is what he had to say. And we will in partnership with Indigenous communities, the provinces, territories, and all other vital partners, fully implement the calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, 
starting with the implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Calls to Action We call upon the federal government to establish multi-year funding for community-based youth organizations to deliver programs on reconciliation and establish a national network to share information and best practices. On December 6, 2016, the nearly one-year anniversary of the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the Prime Minister said that 36 of the 45 calls to action that are under solely federal purview have been established. He continued by saying that almost 2,000 students started the school year in six brand new schools. There are now 31 new schools under construction on reserve, another 27 are being designed and a further 72 are in feasibility studies. However, funding for Aboriginal schools is still unequal. That's why there are events such as Have a Heart Day. Have a Heart Day. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission says, Government failure to meet the educational needs of Aboriginal children continues to the present day. Government funding is both inadequate and inequitably distributed. That's why Have a Heart Day has been established. Have a Heart Day is a child and youth-led reconciliation campaign that brings together caring Canadians to help ensure First Nations children have the services they need to grow up safely at home get a good education, be healthy, and be proud of who they are. We have events such as Have a Heart Day. Mm -hmm. So what was that event about? Where did we go? Well, Have a Heart Day was at Parliament Hill, and uh, like a, a whole bunch of schools and groups of people came, and uh, we talked about how uh, Aboriginals aren't getting... Uh, like, as much funds as we are for their education system. On February 14th, 2017, more than 700 students from 20 different schools, as well as hundreds of other supporters, gathered on Parliament Hill. According to the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society of Canada, the event was to promote love and fairness for First Nations children in celebration of Have a Heart Day. Glashan students were there and read poems they created to speak on the importance of equity and education funding for First Nations children. The truth of our common experiences will help set our spirits free and pave the way to reconciliation. Education is the pathway to understanding and will further the process of reconciliation. It is now the responsibility of every Canadian to continue to keep this dark part of Canadian history in the light.